Hi sisters, Gilly Star here and welcome back to my channel. Hi! So, as you can see from the title of this video, we will not be reviewing the Jack and Hill palette. Instead, we will be reliving my high school experience in chemistry. So basically, I didn't learn anything all year, but we are changing that up today with the help of my two favorite shishers. So here are my two favorite shishers. Tabitha Adam and Octavia Particle. So Tabitha Adam, so what are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna be doing the Briggs Washer Oscillation Reaction. Bam! And if you would like to learn more about this combo reaction, then keep, keep on, on watching. watching. First things first, safety, honey. In this experiment, we will be using hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid, which can cause serious burns. We will also be using malonic acid, which is a strong eye irritant. So please ensure to wear goggles and gloves before beginning this experiment. To begin this tutorial, we need to set up our ingredients. To the left, we have hydrogen peroxide. In the middle, we have potassium iodate and malonic acid. And to the right, we have starch and all the materials we will need for this experiment. The overall chemical reaction for the balanced chemical formula is iodate plus hydrogen peroxide plus malonic acid plus hydrogen yields ICHCO2H2 plus oxygen and water. The two reactions for the oscillation process is iodate plus hydrogen peroxide plus hydrogen yields HIO3 minus plus oxygen plus water. The second reaction is HIO3 minus plus malonic acid yields ICHCOOH2 plus water. First, I'm having Shisha Tabitha measure out the amount of grams of each ingredient we'll be using. Hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid are liquids, so they will be measured at the later time. First, she is measuring out 1.5 grams of malonic acid. Then she will be measuring out 0.4 grams of manganese sulfate. And finally, she will be measuring out 0.1 grams of soluble starch. We are now making the 8.6% hydrogen peroxide solution, also known as solution A. This is by taking 29 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and adding it to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. We then fill the rest of the flask up with distilled water to dilute the hydrogen peroxide. Keep in mind the hydrogen peroxide is an acid and can be harmful to the skin. We then measure out 40 milliliters of this new solution to a graduated cylinder and then cap it to save it for later. According to Google, if the H-bond formation takes place between different molecules, then it is intermolecular H-bonding. But if the bonding takes place in the same molecule, then it is intramolecular H-bonding. Hydrogen peroxide will be a polar molecule because polarity occurs due to the electronegativity of the two atoms and always highly electronegative. This means that hydrogen atoms will be less electronegative, so the arrows will be pointing from the hydrogen atoms to the oxygen atoms. The intramolecular bond between the atoms is very weak, so the molecule can be broken down easily, making it very reactive and powerful. Iodine is a nonpolar covalent molecule because the two atoms are joined together by a covalent bond. This means both are iodine this means this is because both are iodine atoms, which means they both have the same electronegative electronegativity, which results in no net dipole moment. Thus the intramolecular forces of the iodine bonding is weak. potassium iodate and distilled water. We first measure out three point three milliliters of sulfuric acid into a five milliliter graduated cylinder. Into a bigger graduated cylinder, we put in some distilled water. Keep in mind that sulfuric acid is a very, very dangerous acid and can be very harmful to your skin. So we, therefore, we add some distilled water at the bottom and add the 3.3 milliliters of sulfuric acid. We then wash out the 5 milliliter graduated cylinder with some water to make sure that any excess sulfuric acid is gone from that tube. We then add the rest of the distilled water up to the line of the volumetric flask. Once the sulfuric acid is diluted, you then add the 4.3 grams of potassium iodate and mix it. Make sure that it is completely dissolved before you pour it into the graduated cylinder. Measure out 40 milliliters of that new solution and then cap it to save it for later. Okay, shishers, now we begin the part of the experiment where we have to measure out soluble starch and add it to boiling water. Here we have all the materials we will need, including malonic acid, soluble starch, and manganese sulfate monohydrate. First, we we'll begin by boiling 100 milliliters of distilled water. So, according to Google, this says that 3H2O... Um, no, sister, over here! <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. In this reaction, heat will be used to heat up the solution. Heat will be released into the system, making it an endothermic reaction. There will be heating of malonic acid to turn a solid into a liquid. Malonic acid under heat will decompose. 
We measure out five milliliters of the boiling hot water and add starch to it. Starch is only soluble when heat is added to it. If it was added to cold water, it would not break. Heat helps break up that crystalline structure that starch has. We add that back into the bigger beaker and let that sit for about five minutes. The solution is exothermic. The energy from bonds is breaking, meaning the heat energy is absorbed when the solute dissolves in solution. Increasing the temperature introduces heat into the system. There will be an excess amount of HOI because there is more HOI being produced than consumed, but the excess amount is being reduced by the hydrogen peroxide, making HOI to I-. minus. Once the boiling water with starch has cooled down, you first add the manganese sulfate and stir. Once it's dissolved, you then add the malonic acid. Stir. You now add solution C to a graduated cylinder up to 40 milliliters. Once that is complete, you are ready to mix them all together. HLY will be a weak acid while CH2CO2H2 is the base as an example. ICHCO2H2 will be the conjugate base and H2O is the conjugate acid. For the second reaction, IO3- minus is going to be the weak base for this reaction. However, 2H2O2 is going to be neutral. It's neither going to be a base or acid. H plus is going to be the strong acid in the formula since it gives itself the HIO3-. Minus. On the product side, HIO is going to be the conjugate acid and 2H2O is going to be the conjugate base. Solution A, solution B, and let that stir around. The only gas that is created is the vapor from the malonic acid. Add solution C and voila! Look at that pigmentation, shishers! There are two steps that occur. Step one, the potassium iodate is reduced to the manganese ion. The reaction will turn purple and a little green. Combining the colors will make the solution look blue. Step two, the manganese is reduced to manganese dioxide. The change in the solution will have tiny brown particles making the solution appear yellow. The phase in which the substances exist depends on the intermolecular forces and the kinetic energies of the molecule. The kinetic energy provides the energy to break the attractive forces and bring distance be between the molecules. The change of color is occurring because there are tiny particles of a new chemical forming during the reaction, meaning one chemical is taking electrons from other chemicals. During the reaction, potassium iodate is being reduced. Solution A, hydrogen peroxide and water, and solution B, potassium iodate and sulfuric acid are poured into a beaker. The mixture creates a clear solution, meaning the iodine and the iodine ion concentration has decreased. Then the solution turns yellow, meaning the iodine and the iodine ion concentration has decreased. In chemistry, equilibrium is reached when the reactions even out. However, with this reaction, the chemicals oscillate with one another, which results in the changes of various colors. This is shown through iodine being consumed and produced throughout the various reactions. While the oscillations occur, the chemical mixture is far from equilibrium. This is seen when the reaction follows two different pathways and periodically switches from them. The different pathways are the radical and non-radical processes that occur. For example, when solution A, B, and C are first mixed, iodate reacts with hydrogen peroxide to produce very little of HiO2-. This results in HiO2- reacting with iodate through the radical process because there are low concentrations of iodide. The radical process increases the concentration of HiO. With this large amount of HiO, it reacts with I- to produce I2. This increase in the iodine ion enables a sudden blue color. Bam! Adding solution C, starch, malonic acid, and manganese sulfate and water into the mixture, making the dark blue color from the formation of the starch iodine combination. Both iodine and iodine ion concentration will decrease. Whew, that chemical reaction was so pigmented. I was shook it. So, Gil, did you learn anything today? I'll just stick to makeup. Well, thank you guys for being on my channel today. It was a pleasure having you guys. No problem. We enjoyed being on your channel. Bye! Sasha away. If you would like to follow me on my makeup journey, well, not my chem journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, the both just GillyStar. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes type stuff is GillyStar with an extra R after star. Just kidding, gonna be reviewing the Fenty Beauty Fairy Bomb next week. Stay tuned. Bye, Bye sisters! sisters.